Living in a representative government, we're going to look at the people who do the day-to-day, hands-on work of government. Let's talk about the legislative branch. Our objectives today are as follows. How does Congress represent the people? What roles and functions do members of Congress perform? And lastly, compare and contrast the House of Representatives to the Senate. Now, Congress has never been very widely admired by the American people. Mark Twain amused his audiences with comments like, suppose you were an idiot, and suppose you were a member of Congress, but I repeat myself. Television personalities such as Jay Leno or Jon Stewart often make similar comments. Do you agree or disagree with Twain? Do you think Congress is still immensely important in the American scheme of democratic government? First and foremost, Congress is an important branch because it makes the laws. We know this because in Article 1 of the Constitution, it gives the lawmaking power to Congress. It also specifies that the people of several states shall choose the members of Congress in regularly scheduled elections. Each member of Congress represents the people of a particular geographic area. The people who live within that area are called the members' constituents. The Founders set up a bicameral Congress for several reasons. Historically, we created a bicameral legislature because the British Parliament had a bicameral legislature. Uh, also, most state assemblies were bicameral. We create a bicameral legislature for practical reasons. It settled the conflict between the New Jersey plan and the Virginia plan with representation. Theoretically, the framers favored a bicameral Congress in order that one house might act as a check on the other. It diffused power of Congress to prevent it from overwhelming other branches, like the executive or judicial. Each term of Congress lasts for two years, and each of those two-year terms are numbered consecutively. The start of each new two-year term is now noon of the third day of January of every odd-numbered year. A session of Congress is that period of time during which each year Congress assembles and conducts business. There are two sessions to each term of Congress, one session each year. Only the president may call Congress into a special session, a meeting to deal with some emergency situation, like World War II with Pearl Harbor. Immediately, the Constitution established a bicameral legislature, that is, a legislature made up of two houses. You have the Senate and the House of Representatives. These houses differ significantly in key details. Let's look at them more in depth. The exact size of the House of Representatives today is 435 members. It's not fixed by the Constitution, but it is set by Congress. The Constitution provides that the total number of seats in the House of Representatives shall be apportioned or distributed among the states on the basis of their respective populations. Each state is guaranteed at least one seat, no matter what its population. Today, each of the 435 seats in the House represents an average of over 700,000 people. With the Reapportionment Act of 1929, Congress and the Census Bureau can determine the number of seats each state should have based on population. How many representatives does your state have? If a state has more than one representative, most likely that state has been divided into districts. The larger the state, the more districts and representatives you would have. Congressional district maps in several states show one and sometimes several districts of very odd shapes. Those districts have usually been gerrymandered. That is, they have been drawn to the advantage of the political party that controls the state legislatures. We will be discussing this a little bit more in depth in a later lesson. In order to be qualified to win office, the Constitution says that a member of the House must be at least 25 years of age, have been a citizen of the United States for at least seven years, and 
be an inhabitant of the state from which he or she is elected. Representatives only have two-year terms. This rather short term means that representatives are always looking at the next election around the corner. That fact tends to make them pay close attention to the folks back home. There is no constitutional limit on the number of terms any members of Congress may serve. Now that we know about the House of Representatives, let's look at the Senate. The Constitution says that the Senate shall be composed of two senators from each state, and so the Senate is a much smaller body than the House. Like the House, the size of the upper chamber has grown with the country. Today, a hundred senators represent the 50 states. The framers hoped that the smaller Senate would be a more enlightened and responsible body than the House. Many of them thought that the House would be too often swayed by the immediate impact of events. As a result, the framers gave senators a longer term of office and set the qualifications for membership in the Senate a cut above those they set for the House. A senator must meet a higher level of qualifications for office than those the Constitution sets for a member of the House. A senator must be at least 30 years of age, have been a citizen of the United States for at least 9 years, and be an inhabitant of the state from which he or she is elected. Each one of the 100 members of the upper house represents an entire state. Each senator is elected from the state at large, but it hasn't always been that way. It wasn't until the 17th Amendment when we finally had direct election of senators. U.S. senators were finally elected directly by the people of their states. Senators serve for six-year terms, three times the length of those for which members of the House are chosen. The Constitution puts no limit on the number of terms any senator may serve. Senator terms are staggered. Only a third of them, 33 or 34 terms, expire every two years. The Senate is then a continuous body. That is, all of its seats are never up for election at the same time. The six-year term gives senators a somewhat greater degree of job security than that enjoyed by members of the lower house. Senators tend to be more focused on the big picture of national concerns. Senators are also more likely to be covered by the media in their states. Senators find it easier to establish themselves as the champion of public policies that appeal to large segments of American people, for example, social security or national health care. Members of both houses of Congress play five major roles. As a legislator, congressmen make laws. It's one of their most important responsibility. We're going to look into lawmaking in the future. Senators and representatives are elected to represent the people. The members of both houses cast hundreds of votes during each session of Congress. Congressmen are also committee members. Members of both the House and the Senate act as servants of their constituents. Most often, they do this as they and their staff aides try to help people in various dealings with the federal bureaucracy. Lastly, legislatures are politicians. Most members of Congress know that to deny or fail to respond to most of their requests would mean to lose votes in the next election. This is a key fact for all the roles in members of Congress. Legislator, representative, committee member, constituent, servant, and politician. They're all related, at least in part, to their efforts to win re-election. Today, senators and representatives are paid $174,000 per year. A few members are paid somewhat more depending on the position. Members receive a number of fringe benefits and some are quite substantial. For example, generous travel allowances offset the cost of several round trips each year between home and Washington. Members pay relatively small amounts for life and health insurance and for outpatient care by medical staff on Capitol Hill. They also have a generous retirement plan to which they contribute. Members are also provided with offices in one of the several Senate and House office buildings near the Capitol and allowances for officers in their home, state, or district. Each member is given funds for hiring staff as well. 
The franking privilege is a well-known benefit that allows them to mail letters and other materials postage free by substituting their uh, signature or frank for the postage. Congress has also provided its members with the free printing and through franking, the free distribution of speeches, newsletters, and the like. This concludes Legislative Branch 101. I have a few questions I'd like to ask you after watching this video. Does Congress fairly represent the demographics of the American people? Are the qualifications reasonable for congressmen? What major roles do you think congressmen should focus on? Most importantly, do you agree or disagree with Mark Twain's quote, suppose you were an idiot and suppose you were a member of Congress, but I repeat myself, do you think Mark Twain's just being a little salty? Why or why not?